The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Tyler Wist, who is a field crop entomologist and research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. How's it going today? It's going good. How are you doing, Kara? Great. Hey, everyone. <laughs> so we're here today to talk about uh, some things you've been seeing out in the field recently, and uh, one of those things has been aster yellows on sticky carts. What can you tell me about what you found? So, so far, what we're finding are the aster leaf hoppers. So these guys are small, tiny little bullet-shaped insects. They're best caught with a sweep net, actually, but the aster leaf hopper is a vector that means it carries a disease called aster yellows. So it's got its it's got the phytoplasma in its little salivary glands, and when it starts feeding on a plant that's susceptible, it can infect that plant with aster yellows. And then we can get situations like we had in 2012 when a lot of the canola fields out there were infected with aster yellows. And so we get uh, we've got a threshold level, not a threshold level, sorry, we've got. Uh, We've got a scale from zero up to about five for the uh, severity of aster yellows. And so anything above, above a two on the severity scale, the seed production in that plant just goes way down. So it's not something we want in our field. Now, this insect is migratory. It doesn't do very well surviving in Saskatchewan. Winters are just too cold for it. So it blows in from the, uh, the United States and possibly even Mexico. So part of what the Prairie Pest Monitoring Network does is it tracks the winds that these insects could be migrating on. So we've been tracking the winds, looking for diamondback moth, and now we're trying to see if those same winds are bringing the migratory aster leafhopper into our province. And so in the last couple of years... The, uh, the leafhoppers have come around the 22nd of May. This year, they were about a week earlier. And so if it does correspond really well with the diamondback moth migration, then it was about that second week in May that we started having aster leafhoppers as well as diamondback moth blowing in. So what sort of, uh, there aren't a ton of economic thresholds available in Western Canada yet, but there has been some research done in the States. Can you talk a bit about that? So down in the States, aster yellows is a really big problem in carrot production, uh, lettuce production as well, and celery production. So possibly a few other crops too, but uh, those plants are really sensitive. And so what they've done is they've developed an aster yellows uh, risk threshold. And so what it needs is it needs the number of leaf hoppers that you catch in your sweep net multiplied by the percentage of those leaf hoppers that are infected with aster yellows. And so you can't just look at a leaf hopper and say, hey, you're infected. You need a test for it. And so uh, we've been using something called a nested PCR to tell whether or not the leaf hoppers are infected, but it just wasn't that sensitive. It wasn't getting us the results that I thought we needed. I thought we needed one leaf hopper um, and put that in a vial and test it. And so at Agriculture Canada in Saskatoon, Dr. Tim DeMonso was working on a different technique, and the acronym is LAMP. I'm not going to say what it stands for because I'll probably get it wrong. But we took that LAMP and we took a different molecular target, and we were actually able to get a more sensitive test for aster yellows. And so we actually got it published in February into a journal, and it's been downloaded almost 4,000 times already, which is pretty good. And uh, our lead author was my grad student here, Carolina. So you can see her holding on to a yellows infected canola plant. So this is September, late September, and that plant should not be green, but that's what aster yellows can do to a plant. So this is one that's uh, severe. That's probably a, a level three or four. And yeah, no yield from that plant. So she, uh, she got into the Star Phoenix here, that's our local paper, as a young innovator with, uh, with the University of Saskatchewan. And so 
that was that was really exciting. And what the test now can do is we can smash up one leaf hopper, and within half an hour to an hour, we can know whether that one leaf hopper is infected. So now we can move from, um, you know, we've got leaf hoppers in ditches. How do we know if they're infected? We can put those two things together, and now we can get that Astra Yellows risk index. Now it hasn't been applied yet to canola, so we don't know how many leaf hoppers in your field margin or how many leaf hoppers in your field you actually need to get different percentages of infection in your field. So that's a long-term study that definitely needs to be done. And now we've got the tools to do it because we can take those leaf hoppers and we can get a we can get a, a quick answer. So before the test would take at least a week, but now we can do it in about an hour. And so we can then transmit that information to the growers who might need to see that sooner rather than later. Because uh, work from Christelle Olivier and Bob Elliott, they found that all it takes is three infected leafhoppers to transmit uh, Astra Yellows to a plant, and it only takes about 10 hours of feeding. And so it, uh, it can be pretty quick. But if you've got the leafhoppers in your field, they can live for up to a month. And so they can keep transmitting and keep transmitting. So the idea then is maybe you can control that Astra Yellows before your whole field gets in. And what sort of yield impacts can the Astra Yellows actually have? So we've looked at it on a per plant level, and those three leaf hoppers feeding for 10 hours will wipe out the yield in that plant. Wow. So what sorts of things are out there as far as beneficials right now that can actually attack the leaf hoppers? So the leaf hoppers have a parasitoid, and it's actually really interesting. The parasitoid, it's inside the body of the leaf hopper. But when it gets to a certain stage, it kind of protrudes out of the side of the leaf hopper like a big sack. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's super gross to look at, but also really cool at the same time. Now, they're not doing a great job controlling the leaf hoppers, but everything that is in your field as a generalist beneficial insect, like green lace wings and ladybugs, could potentially be eating the, the leaf hoppers, as well as those ground beetles running around on the ground could be eating them too, but leaf hoppers are also really hard to catch. So you always have to make that call. Do I want to protect the beneficials in my field and is it worth it spraying for leaf hoppers in my field? Right now we don't have a great answer on whether it's worth it spraying for leaf hoppers in the field right now. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you would like to add? Oh, that is a good question. Today is actually National Insect Appreciation Day. So um, I'm going to throw that in there. So our, our National Society, the Entomological Society of Canada, has declared it National Insect Day, and it's June the 8th. And so every time June the 8th comes around, look for great pictures of bugs all over social media. Okay, awesome. Will do. Thank you very much, Tyler. Thank you very much, Kara.